Brad, and you have to trust me here. I'm doing a shift, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. So we do trust you because there. Yeah. <laughs> we see it now. <laughs> It logs me on. How could we fix that? Would, could you do either a validation, like a, you could do that, or, or something in C sharp? Like okay, something in C sharp, that's true. Not, ter not terribly specific. <laughs> we'll only give maybe a half point to Gryffindor on that one. <laughs> What would I do with that? What would I do with the properties on the text box? Well, I know there's in SQL you can do upper and lower. Okay. One thing I could do is on the database level, I could tell the database to be case sensitive. All right? So I could do that. The other thing I could do is I've retrieved the password. Once I've done a select, I could put code in there to actually have an if statement to check the password against the text box again. And that comparison within C Sharp would be case sensitive. Would that be three equal signs? No. So I could do this. If it does a data read, I'd have to pull the password. <coughs> I could say if, what do I want to say here, my data sub 3 equals text box 2 dot text. I'm going to make it smaller for a second so I can see everything. Here, I might be nice and give them a hint and say, hey, are you sure your cap locks isn't on? Because they've typed in their password correct, but the cap locks. So I could say at this point, label text, hmm, cap locks on. Let's try that. Oh, we need to add session. Pardon me? Session variable. What about it? Zero and the 
unsuccessful. Oh, I typed in P moron. Cat blocks on? Nice. All right. What's the difference between the two? SQL by default, unless you do some configuration of the database, it's going to do the comparisons not case sensitive. When I get into C sharp, however, this comparison is going to be. This part is going to be. Um, a case sensitive comparison. Sort of the session, the password is a session variable. Possible unintended reference comparison to get a value comparison. Cast the left side to type spring string. Let's do that. Strictly speaking, a um, that's a good question. I'm not really sure why. Apparently, that's not a string that my data, even though it sure looks and acts like one. But at any rate, by doing this, I force the issue and demand that it be treated like a string. The point is, is this comparison is a case-sensitive comparison. So if it does the read, if if the if the select finds something. The where clause is not going to be case sensitive, so it will find things even if it doesn't match case. So if I bring in and do a comparison in C sharp, that is going to be a case sensitive comparison. So I can then go and respond. And just to be sure we know what's going on, I'm, res I'm, I'm um, responding with a specific um, error message to the situation. All right, now, next week is a short week, all right, because of Thanksgiving. I definitely want to cover in class on Tuesday, insert updates and deletes, programmatically that is. We've done inserts, updates, and deletes from there. And a classic example of this is going to be a vote. Right? When I do a vote, I want to insert into the vote table. All right? um, and the insert doesn't really make sense to do it in a details view. Because really, I'm going to get the user ID from the session variable. I'm going to get the date from the current date. And I'm going to get the vote from a drop down or a radio button or something. So I can just as well write my own code for that. All right? And believe it or not, it's actually going to be easier than this, all right? Because we're not reading any data. We're simply executing an insert. It's either going to succeed or it's going to fail. Now, one thing I didn't do here, which we probably should do, is we should probably wrap this in a try-catch, um, just in case, for whatever reason, it can't do the SQL read, like the database is down. So we'll also touch on um, try-catches. Once we learn how to do an insert, an update delete is just about the same, except instead of saying the word insert, it's going to say update and delete. In fact, once we learn how to do a select to do an update, delete, and insert is the same. It's essentially this code with select 
change to insert, update, or delete, and we can actually get rid of some code. So that's actually good news. The inserts, updates, and deletes are actually simpler than the select. Um, I decided not to have another assignment, which I know is going to break a lot of hearts. All right, That will give you something to be thankful for next Thursday, <laughs> if you don't already have enough things. Um, because my thought is, is that some of these things that we're talking about here, you can likely apply to your project. And therefore, if I was going to give you another assignment, it would have been something along the lines of this. And probably most of you can do that. And I really want to see you guys do a real bang-up job on your projects. So um, next Tuesday, I'll lecture about this, about update or inserts, probably touch on try-catch, may touch on a couple other things. The following week will be a week that we will come in here because those guys have the lab until 11 50, or uh, 10.45. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk for a while, then we'll adjourn the lab, and you can have a longer work session in there. All right, we'll see you in lab. I do need to borrow someone's thumb drive again.